and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we are going to learn how to make this shawl. This shawl pattern is a easy plus to intermediate pattern. You will need to know how to read crochet. When you're looking at your project you'll need to know what you did on the previous few rows. There is also a ribbon pattern for this project and I will put a link for you in the description box. Here is a photo of the shawl blocking. You can see the exact pattern when it's all laid out flat. Here is my other version that I made. This is when I was testing the pattern for myself and designing the pattern. I will put all the yarn details about this shawl in the written pattern which will be located on my website. There will be a link in the description box below so you can go and check that out. So sometimes shawls don't look any good on mannequins so I'm going to put it on here and model for you. Bear in mind I can't see hardly anything that I'm doing because the viewfinder in my video camera is so small so I'm if I had a mirror it would be a lot better. You don't need a shawl pin like I'm using in the video tutorial but they do come in handy to keep your shawl pinned in place. This shawl can be worn in various ways. I must say that this is probably the favourite way for me to wear it just wrapped around the front like that. My photos were taken on the mannequin that's just over my shoulder there to the left of the screen and it kind of looks a bit strange on her. I have ordered a, a mannequin that has legs, arms and a head so I'm very excited about that I'm waiting for that to arrive so as you can see as I said it looks great in various different ways I thought I would model this shawl just so you could see what it looks like and how it drapes please subscribe if you haven't already because there are always plenty of video tutorials coming out you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram again those links for those social media sites will be in the description box of this video tutorial so let's get started on the lesson for our supplies, we're going to need quite a lot of supplies for this one. Well, it feels like I've got a lot of stuff in front of me more than normal. So I'm going to start off with the optional things. You're going to need some beads. This is for the edging and they go right on the last row. If you don't want to add beads, then you don't have to add them. It doesn't make any difference to the shawl, really. It's just a different edging. These are 3.6mm seed beads and you can see the colour there. This is just a packet I got from my local craft store, which would be Spotlight if you're in Australia. Uh, Spotlight's also in New Zealand and I think it's in Singapore too. These, I'm pretty sure these were $3. My receipt isn't, oh my docket's not real close to me. I'm sure they were $2.99, so they're reasonably cheap and you can see there's, you know, heaps and heaps of beads. I decided to go with the clear ones. I've already taken them out of the packet. This is like a herb storage jar, which I've never used. And that plastic white bit on the top comes off and they are the same size as the other ones i just pulled the sticker off that was there and then put it on with a bit of sticky tape and these are just clear you are also going to need <laughs> i've left that piece of thread on there so i could find the needle you're going to need a needle this is not a, a yarn needle it's a sewing needle it's sharp on the end and it has a really small eye so you're going to need beads that are going to fit two strands of the yarn that you're using. I'm using a worsted weight yarn. This works really well. This project works really well with DK yarn. My original test pattern was worked in DK yarn. So you want a bead that's going to go through two strands. I found this quite hard to get on. It was easy to get on the needle, but to push it over those two strands, it was quite hard. So I could have gone with a bigger uh, bead. But there wasn't any bigger in this style of bead. I wanted to do it on a budget. There were some really pretty beads but they were $7.99 for a strand and there was about 10 beads and I know I'm going to need a lot more than that. So the amount of beads that you need is how many points that you're going to add to your shawl or how many spaces that you have on your very last row that you decide. You can make this pattern as big as you want it because the the edging that we do works on any amount of rows so it doesn't really matter. You will also need the other style of yarn needle which I cannot find. I'm going to go and buy about 25 of these yarn. The other yarn needles are the metal. I've got a plastic one that'll work just fine. We're also going to need three stitch markers. You can use these plastic ones, the locking stitch markers. These are like little metal bulb pins like a safety pin but they're snagless. You could use the clip-on ones, you've got the lobster class ones, or you could just use a strand of yarn and tie it on. 
the clipping stitch markers, or the locking stitch markers, sorry, are probably better because they're easy to remove and we do move them up our project as we go. So the pieces of yarn might be a little bit fiddly, but that's if that's all you got, then that's totally going to work anyway. So don't worry if you don't have any of those locking stitch markers. We're going to need a pair of scissors and we're going to need a crochet hook to go with your yarn. I'm using a six millimeter crochet hook. This yarn, which I'll talk about in a minute, I'm just seeing what size it recommends. It recommends a five millimeter crochet hook. So you're going to need a crochet hook that is two sizes bigger. So the next size up from a five is a five and a half, and then this is a six, so it's two sizes bigger. It doesn't matter what yarn you are using. If you're using DK, it normally recommends a four millimeter crochet hook and you could use a five millimeter crochet hook. What you want is loose tension because this is a shawl, it's lovely and drapey. So that's the crochet hook I'll be using. If you'd like to get yourself some of these tulip crochet hooks, they are awesome. I love them, they are my favorite crochet hooks. There is an affiliate link in the description box below. If you make a purchase through that link, it does give me a little bit of commission at no extra cost to you. So it helps keep my videos free. The yarn we're going to use today, which I'm very excited, is Chic Sheep by Marley Bird. You can see that there. Marley Bird is a designer and also a teacher for redheart.com. So this is the yarn we are using from Red Heart. A huge, huge, huge thank you to Red Heart for providing the yarn for this project. They sent me six balls of the blue and then six balls of the pink. We don't use them all on the project but it was very very generous of them. This yarn is amazing. It is so so soft. It is a merino wool. This is the first merino wool that line that they've done. It's 100% merino. It's lovely and soft. It doesn't have a prickle factor so it shouldn't make you itchy unless you have a severe reaction to merino yarn. It's a medium four ply, it's lovely and plump, and it uses a five millimeter or a H size crochet hook. And you can also knit with it and it recommends the same size. Of course you can knit with it, it's yarn. It recommends the same size needles. So machine wash, which is great. Some yarns you do have to, especially merinos or wool yarns, you do have to wash by hand, but this must be machine treated. So it's great go in the washing machine. This one's called Poolside. It's a 3.5 ounce or 100 gram yarn and there's our meterage and yards. And we're going to use three of your main color for this project. This project will work with two balls but your shawl will be a lot smaller. I found that three, this is a large shawl, the three worked really well. For my contrast color I am choosing the same yarn of course but the colorway is, oh it's called Fairy Tale. That is such a cute name. I didn't actually look at that before I picked it up. That is such a cute name. Mm -hmm. I think it has a free pattern too. Yep, you can get a free pattern for this cowl here. It's a knitted pattern. And you can find that on redheart.com. It's lovely and squishy. It's soft. It's so soft. You have to get your hands on some of this stuff. So that's Chic Sheep by Marley Bird. And Marley is, she's an awesome person. She's so funny. She's lovely. I'm going to try and do a center pool wall. These balls work really well with center pool. When they just, you don't get any knots when you're pulling it out of the one sitting in a project bag. When you're pulling it out, it just feeds out lovely. All right, we're going to get lots of yarn from it. Or not. No! Whoopee! <laughs> we are going to start with a slip knot. You can do this any way that you like. And we are going to make a chain of 14 chains. Once we have our 14 chains, we are going to do three double crochet into the fifth chain from the crochet hook. We don't count the one that's on our crochet hook. One, two, three, four, and five. We're going to work three double crochet into there. And 
and it goes all in that same chain. And you'll have your chains that you skipped and then three stitches. This counts as the very first double crochet and a chain one space. We're going to skip two stitches and do three double crochet and a chain one in the next stitch. So we're going to skip two chains, so one, two, in the next one, we're going to work three double crochet. And a chain one. And we're going to repeat this across. So we're going to skip two stitches, one, two, in the next stitch we're going to do three double crochet and a chain one. Again, we're going to skip two stitches and now we're up to our end space and the end space it says ending with three double crochet chain one and one double crochet into the last chain so going in there for double crochet we're going to work three of those chain one and one double crochet and this is worked at the end of every single row three double crochet chain one and one double crochet and that acts as our increase one of our increases that we do on this pattern and then we work our next lot of stitches into this chain one space that's on the end just here so we're going to turn our work around we're going to work back across. We're going to work a chain four. If you have an alternative stitch that you do, so if you do like a, I think it's called a standing double crochet, if you do that instead of a chain three, you're most welcome to do that instead. So it's chain four because we have a double crochet and a chain one. That's what that represents. And into the first chain space, which is right next to the chain four, so this little gap here, we are going to work three double crochet with our chain one. So that's our increase for the start of the row and that will be done on every row except for the edging but we work this every row for the main part of our project and now we've got these spaces as we can see here we've got one two and three and then there's end space here but just looking at those three spaces I'm sorry I'm going fast on the double crochets but it's just three double crochet if, if if I'm going a bit too fast, you can pause the video. You can also change the speed. So we've done our first section, our uh, first increase, sorry. Into the next chain one space, we're going to work three double crochet and a chain one. Into the next space, so this is actually the middle space of this row, we're going to work an increase. It's different to the edge ones, the ones on the sides. So we're going to go and do three double crochet chain one and three double crochet but all back in that same space so back in there again and chain one so we've got our increase there we're going to grab our stitch marker because I've got two the same or kind of the same and then one that's different I'm going to put this different one in the middle I don't know why I'm just going to do that 
So the, the bit that we just made, that is our increase and we're putting our stitch marker in the chain one space. We're going to do three double crochet and a chain one into the next chain one space, so that's here. And into the end space we're going to work our end decrease, uh, end increase. There is a spider running across the table. <sighs> Go away. It was only a little spider, like really teeny tiny. If it was big, I wouldn't be sitting in front of the camera still. <laughs> I'd be across the room. So three double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet. So that's row two, and oops, and that's what it should look like. Doesn't really look like a shawl yet, does it? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it looks weird. So row three, we're going to chain four. Oops, one, two, three, four. You can turn first then do your chain or chain then turn. It doesn't really matter. Just keep with what you do every time, which I probably haven't done. <laughs> it, I don't think it really matters, I don't think. So we've done chain four, three double crochet and a chain one into the first chain one space and that's right next to the chain four that we just did. So right there, three double crochet. chain one, move your stitch marker out of your screen, there's one right here too which you can't see. And this row there are no increases in the middle of our shawl so we are just going to do three double crochet, my yarn is not feeding out properly. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ugh. hang on guys. Hopefully you're getting a laugh too, because otherwise that's just embarrassing, isn't it? We interrupt this broadcast for a ball of yarn creeping across the screen. So we've got two, so we need to do another one. And a chain one. And that's in every space across. When we come to the stitch marker, which will be just in a sec, we just ignore it and pretend it's not there. So in that chain one space, we're going to work three double crochet and a chain one. And we're going to, anyhow, said ignore that stitch marker. That's going to come in handy on all our rows. So we're just doing three double crochet, chain one in each space across. And because we've just done the increase, the one that's there, we have actually gained a space, an extra space on our row. Chain one. We're coming up to our end space. You know what to do. I'm sure you do. Three double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet in the same space. You can see it's starting to form a shawl shape, can't you? Now we're up to row four, and again, chain four. And we're going to work three double crochet and a chain one into that space right next to our chain four. Into our next space we are going to work an increase and the increase when we are sort of in the shawl is the one that we did here but on the ends it's slightly different. So into this space here we're going to work three double crochet chain one and three double crochet in the same space. Chain one. There is always a chain one after we do our three double crochets, just in case I forget to do one. There's always, there is always one there. We're going to get our stitch marker and we're going to place that in the chat, whoa, 
in the chain one space. You can see that. And this is the outer increase. And then I'll make total sense in a couple more rows time. This is our middle increase and this is our outer increase. And we have two outers and one middle increase. Don't let that confuse you because it will make total sense when we get further into the pattern. I promise. We're going to chain. No, we're not. We're going to do three double crochet and chain one in the next four chain one spaces. This is my very first tutorial after Christmas break. Can you tell? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Hopefully it's making sense to you guys. No, it should do. So in the next four spaces, so we just did one. This is our second. That was our third, yes, and this is our fourth. Oop, I'm sorry the stitch mark is dragging on the cardboard. Into the next chain one space, which is this one, which is our second last space. You've got that one and then that one. We're going to work our other outer increase. So we're going to work three double crochet. If you can just put up with that stitch mark of making a noise for just a little bit longer, I'm going to go and find something to put on the background so it doesn't make that noise. It's annoying me. One, two, three, chain one, and then three more into that same space. And this is our second outer increase. Chain one. Again, get your third and last stitch marker. And we're going to put that in the chain one space. You can see that's marking that one. These are quite tiny stitch markers, not that great for a video tutorial. Note for next time. But you can still see it, and I will point them out as I get to them. So last space, we are going to do our edge increases, which is three. Three double crochet, chain one, and three double, no, one double crochet. Oh my goodness me, I need to, I'm going to have a little break, I think. My brain is not working. So that's our edge increase, which is three double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. If your project is starting to go a weird shape like mine, see how it's kind of like gone up and then like weird like that. What you can do is just pull and it will actually straighten out. See how it's straightened out? It's got no weird bumps or anything now. And you do this as you go along in your pattern and it just shifts your yarn into the right spot. We are also going to block this pattern. I'm going to show you how to do that and this helps immensely with this pattern. It's it's almost a something that you've got to do with this pattern to make it look its best. So now on that last row we've got our two outer increases which are there. Okay so I'm back, I've had a break and this marks our middle increase and then these two mark our outer increase. I'm pretty sure I told you that just before but just in case I'm going to say that again. Outer increases middle increase. And you'll see here that the increase which is marked, it's got two lots of three double crochet into that one space. When we crochet across, you can read the pattern if you like, but don't really need it after you've done a few rows of this project. What we need to remember is when we come along, so we'll be crocheting along this way, because our yarn's attached over here, We'll be crocheting along this way and if you're left-handed it's just going to be the opposite but it'll still make sense in the middle. See how this space here is lined up with that increase chain one space so the chain one space is in there and you'll see that it's lined up with that space. That is when we know we need to do an increase when this space lines up with that chain one space down there. And this is why I said it's an intermediate 
pattern. It's like an easy intermediate pattern because you do need to pay attention to your stitches on the rows below and you do need to know how to read your crochet which means looking at that and knowing you've got three stitches, a chain one and three stitches in there. So this space is our magic space. That is where we do our increase. If we look across here to our outer increases you can see well we've only just done it so obviously in this chain the one space we don't need to do any increasing because we've got to wait until it's three rows below so three rows after this one we'll be working an increase on this side so the pattern is a three row repeat two rows have increases so one row will be your middle increase row the other row will be your outer increase row and then the third row will, will not have any increase at all. It's just stitching all the way across. No increases. That's my most favorite row. Because <laughs> we don't have to pay attention. So this is row 1, 2, 3, 4, row 5. We're going to chain 1. No, we're not. We're going to chain 4. <laughs> I've had a break and everything. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we are going to work 3 double crochet into the space next to our chain four which is here that's the last time I'm going to remind you where it is because you've done it a few times you know where it is so three double crochet three double crochet chain one and then in each space across until we get to the space where that increase is three rows below we're going to crochet until we get to there. What you can do is you can move your stitch marker now because I found that I just kept crocheting across and I literally I literally pulled out so much on my test pattern that I could have uh, could have crocheted three shawls because I wasn't paying attention. Yep. And if I remember I'll insert the photos <laughs> of when I was pulling out yarn. So this is our outer increase, and because it was a previous increase on the previous row, we don't pay any attention to that little thing. We just keep going. And we're just doing three double crochet, chain one in each space. But well, you probably already guessed that. So we're coming up to the space where our increase is going to go. And you can see that the increase is three rows below. I know I've already told you, but I'm just reminding. Three rows below, and then you've got that one, and then the space lines up. So into this one, we're going to work our increase. And this is because it's our short increases in the middle section, or the outer ones. It's three double crochet, chain one, and three double crochet all in the same space. and a chain one. And now what you can do is grab that stitch marker that you just crocheted over. You can remove it before you work your increase, completely up to you. But it doesn't matter because it's if it's hooked in there you know you're not going to lose it. So in the chain one space I'm going to go in there, pop that stitch marker and that was our middle increase done. So on our middle increase rows that's the only increase that we do so we know now that all the way across is just three double crochet and chain one in each space ignoring that stitch marker I'm just gonna let, let the video keep going because it's not much to the end so we're just ignoring that chain We're just ignoring that stitch marker. We're just crocheting across. Chain one. We're up to our end space here, and that is our end crochet. What is wrong with my brain today? It is our end increase. I know exactly what I want to say, it's just the 
brain and the mouth is not talking to each other. So that's three double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet in that last space. All right, so that was row five. Yes, it was. It was row five. Row five. Oh, goodness. I swear I'm not drunk. I swear. I don't drink alcohol at all, so it's not that. Chain four, and then three double crochet and chain one in that very first space. Into there. And this row is the row that doesn't have any increasing. Now let's say that you didn't print the pattern off, or you don't know how to read a pattern, and you're not using it all. When you look at your work, how are you going to know if it's a row that has no increasing? Well, it's easy. If you remember that thing that I said, how three rows below, when that space lines up, that's when you do your increase. If you look here, this increase that we worked, so these two bits here, it's only one row, two rows below, because that's one row below and then that's two, and there's no space to crochet into. Over here, we've only just worked the increase, so that's definitely not three rows below. And of course, this one's the same as the first... Oops, the stitch marker's disappeared. Pop him out. This one was the same as the other one down the other side, because that's the increase there, and that's only got one row above it. So we know when we crochet across, there is no increasing. So that's three double crochet and a chain one in every space across. See, it's not three rows below, it's only one and two. And plus there is no space here to crochet into. And I'm going to prove it. I'm just going to keep going to the next increase where it shows up in the pattern. Again, this is an increase. Definitely not three rows below, is it? It's like the one below we just did. So ignore that stitch marker and if you can, move that out of the way. And yeah, crochet into there. No increasing because it's not an increased row. Alright, so do this all the way across, and I'll meet you when we are up to the end. And that's what mine is looking like so far. I just worked my end bit, which was three double crochet, chain one, one double crochet into the end space. You've done that a few times already, so you know exactly how to do that. And we're going to work our chain four. One, two, three, four, five, we're going to work our edge increase which is three double crochet chain one in that space if we look at our shawl we can see that the outer which is this one here and this one here is where we're going to do our increase so we've got increase here which is like two lots of three double crochet in the same space and now this space lines up with that increase. So I'm actually going to move my stitch markers up now. You don't have to, you can just crochet across. This is just reminding me to do this in the video. Because I will get distracted and be all the way across. In a minute. I'm pulling out my work. We are going to just go cruising across with our three double crochet and chain one. And we are up to our stitch marker. Your stitch marker could still be attached down to your increase, but it's three rows below and our space lines up 
it's the magic formula so we need to do our increase which is three double crochet chain one and three double crochet there we go and now that the increase is stacked on top you can see that it lines up with this one down here so one two and then third row is our increase righty so again we need to crochet across and we're doing three double crochet and chain one sorry I'm going so fast but if I don't this video tutorial will be three hours long I don't know about you but I don't want to edit that much and I'm sure you don't want to watch that much either so you can see here our increase which is there is not three rows below and there's no space that lines up so again we're ignoring that one sorry buddy we don't play with you until probably the next row or the row after So here we are, it's going to remind me, I told you it would remind me, and because again, I'm, you're going to get sick of me saying this, but I'm not going to say it too much more because we've almost finished our repeats. Got our increase down here, one, two, and then we're on the third row, which is us, because our space lines up with our increase. So that means we need to work another increase. Oh, get out. What is happening? Help. So it's three double crochet, you already know what it is, I'm going to tell you anyway. One, three double crochet, chain one, and three double crochet. Stitch mark is hitting the bench again. Alrighty, so that's our increase. And we want to move our stitch markers up. I think I forgot to do that, I did. I'm sure you were telling me, hey, you forgot to move your stitch marker. I don't particularly like these stitch markers. They are fiddly. They work well if you're doing knitting because you can literally just put that on your knitting needle. You don't need to undo it. But crochet you do. Okay, so we've got our stitch markers moved up. And then work across to the end. And now it's just three double crochet, chain one, in each space so what color are you using I would love to know I love the color of this yarn it's so pretty last space is our edge increase and it is three double crochet chain one and one double crochet so you do have to remember quite a bit for this pattern but it doesn't happen very often so that's probably the good bit looking at our pattern our increases our outer ones are done and we're going to be working across this way so oh looks like we've got a middle increase coming up so we've got the increase which is down here we've got that one and then a space so we need to move that one up And that's going to remind us we need to do an increase there when i was doing my test pattern i wasn't moving these these stitch markers up and just putting it uh, just going by the stitch marker down here i think that's why i was pulling out so much because <laughs> i was just going straight past and not remembering but if it's right here in your face i think that's going to help us a lot more maybe it's just me i don't know do you reckon that would help us heaps more are you that type of person that's got to be in your face to remember? Because <laughs> I know I am. So we're going to chain four and work three double crochet in the first space. Chain one 
and work three double crochet, chain one, all the way and until we get to our middle stitch marker we're going to ignore this very first stitch marker because you can see there we've already worked an increase so work three double crochet chain one in each space across until we get to our middle stitch marker it's getting bigger now getting the screen so you can see here we have our middle stitch marker like the space lines up with our increases down there so we are going to work an increase three double crochet chain one and three double crochet chain one I'm going to move our stitch marker place that in the chain one space And we are going to work all the way across ignoring this stitch marker which is our outer stitch marker and we're going to work three double crochet chain one in each space across including that chain one space I've worked my end one three double crochet chain one one double crochet in the last space and we're going to do our beginning one chain four three double crochet chain one I'm just looking at my shawl and this next row has no increasing and I'm going to show you just in case how do you know that there's the increase there and there's no space to work in there we just worked that increase so definitely not that one now other outer increase is the same increases there and there's no space to work in above the increase so that means it's just crochet all the way across doing three double crochet chain one in each chain one space and that is the repeat for this pattern the pattern actually repeats rows six seven and eight row six is what we are about to repeat now which is no increasing except for the beginning and the end of the row where we do our chain four and then three double crochet chain one and then at this end we do three double crochet chain one and one double crochet so the the row six repeat is is no increasing in the main part of the shawl which is sort of up all this bit in here so that's row six the row seven repeat are our outer increases oops so that's when we do the outer ones which are here here and here you can see the stitch marker there and there and then our row eight repeat is increase in the middle which is there so there's only three rows to remember one row is no increasing at all so it's really nothing to remember and then your row seven and eight is where we're going to do our increasing if you've never done a written pattern before that may not make any sense to you so basically we crocheted until we got to row eight I think that's what we just did one two three four five six seven eight yes we have just done row eight and then it says on the pattern repeats repeat six seven and eight until you have the shawl almost the length that you want because don't forget that the shawl is going to grow and we also need an edging it grows by about a third so just keep that in mind until you have the length that you want so you go back to row six what the instructions were and that was the no increasing then you go back to row seven instructions which were our outer increases then you go back to row eight and that was the increase in the middle of the row and then you just repeat that so you repeat the instructions for six seven and eight then you go back to six seven and eight and you continue on like that until you have the length that you want you can finish this section of the shawl before the edging at any row that you like so don't forget this shawl is going to grow when we block it it is going to grow by about a third it grows a lot because we've got loose tension and everything it grows quite a bit but it makes the most beautiful big shawl I have completed 33 rows all together you can see it's huge 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 and I'm just having a look to see what row I finished on because I didn't write that part down 
I have finished on a row six repeat and that is just the row when we don't do any increases. This white stitch marker is my outer increase marker. It's not showing up very well with the light background. So you can see that there's no increases above this one. And then my middle increase is here and then I've just got that one above so I know that was a row six because there's no increasing on this last row. Let's have a look at the other outer one, which should be the same. <laughs> no increases on that last row. So I know that was the repeat of row six. So this is the finished shawl that I have with the edging. Sorry about the weird lighting. It's quite dark here tonight and um, I've just got my studio lights on, but I've put my tape measure along this top edge here. So not stretch. I haven't stretched this as this at all. Um, I've got my tape measure lined up along the edge. You can see there. It's exactly the same down that end. You just can't see it on the screen. And it is 53 inches, 134 and a half centimeters. And I'm going to measure the depth. So I'm just putting my tape measure. Oh, it does actually start up on the screen around about in the middle, which is somewhere around there. The furthest point it is, this is unstretched, this is not stretched, I've just crocheted it and then put it on the ground, on the floor. So we've got 48 centimetres, again I'll put this on the screen, or 19 inches from, this is where your neck would be, and then to the bottom of the shawl. So I'm very interested to see how much this part of the shawl is going to grow when we block it. I imagine it's going to grow probably another 10 centimeters so that is uh, 10 centimeters what's that is that four inches yeah I think that's four inches yep I imagine it's going to grow about 10 centimeters or four inches so at the moment it's 19 ish inches so that will make it one two three 23 inches in uh, what do you call it depth is that depth width whatever no depth It'll be 20, about 23 inches deep. So that's my guess. Let's see if I get it right. If it does, that'll probably just sit right in the size shawl. And I assume it's going to stretch probably four plus inches across the top edge, which is across there. So the next part in the video tutorial, we are going to work the edging. I will be using the pink for the edging. I could do it all in one colour, but I thought that was a bit too all the one colour. <laughs> so I'm going to add the pink in, and I think that will look really pretty. Oh, and I just undid about 20 stitches. Because my yarn is in the bag across the room, and I just walked with the shawl. Keeping it real, people. Keeping it real. Yep, that row was totally finished off and it isn't now, so I just need to put that back in. So I finished off all the rows that I want to do and I'm going to just cut the yarn off. I'm going to leave about four inches to sew in and then we're just going to finish that off, pull that through. 